One on the solid bag and one on the method feeder. 22 and a half pounds. Came last out the draw. And one on the method feeder within five minutes of each other. That is obviously a solid bag. That is my method feeder. <laughs> 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 Right, this video should be an exciting one. I'm going to be testing method feeder versus solid bags. For a while, I've always thought that they're a very similar presentation. You know, you've got a little patch of bait with your little hook bait in amongst it on the bottom, and the fish comes in and just sucks up a mouthful and gets, gets hooked, hopefully. Um, I don't see why so many people use the solid bag when the method feeder is just such an easy way to present the same sort of thing. So. We're going off for 48 hours on the YouTube Blogger Social to Coking Farm, so I'm looking forward to that, seeing all the guys. But I'm going to be testing the method feeder against solid bags. I'm absolutely knackered. I've just got up really early. I've been working this week as well. I've just got off my ferry in Limington. I've got to drive over to sort of Somerset area. Sometimes when I'm going fishing, I just can't be bothered to drive there, and this is one of those times. Do you ever wish when you're fishing you could just literally... And here we are. Um, we're in the car park now, everyone's here. So we're just gonna drive to the lake and then we're gonna have a little walk around and see where the fish are and then we're gonna do the swim draw. I'm excited, we're gonna go. Hello! <laughs> just done the draw and true to form I came last out of the draw so I got the last pick of the swims um, I don't think it really matters on here there's islands and margins all the way around and the fish do move around and it's well stocked and everything so I'm not too worried but I've got peg 46 which is um, down the far end there so I'm gonna drive down there now and I'm fishing next to Joe from Carpology um, and my last fishing session was actually with him as well yeah, oh, he's spooking off a fish there yeah. That's near my middle rod, that is. Oh, so that's quite cool. Have a little social and stuff. And hopefully you can be my cameraman this time round. <laughs> so yeah, let's get down there and we'll get all the gear sorted. guys here we are all set up at Coking Farm on Long Lake and it's been pretty mental so far there's been quite a few fish caught Joe next to me I think has had three or something already and uh, and Leon next to him has had a couple as well and actually whilst I was putting my middle rod out um, I was putting the bat lead on and the line started pulling away and I had a fish on literally on a solid bag the bag must have only been on the bottom for a couple of minutes and uh, the fish has taken it but unfortunately the hook pulled we are using barbless hooks here, as per the rules. So that does happen sometimes, unfortunately. And especially with a short hook link, I think the lead can sort of bounce it out. But, uh, you know, we're on fish, so that's good. Uh, so I've got three rods out now. One's on the method feeder, and the other two are on solid bags. I figured um, with the method feeder, you know, you're putting out bait every, um, every chuck. So it's only fair, really, that the solid bags have two rods and I'm just going to fish solid bags on those and then the method feeder obviously baits itself up as you cast out so yeah, it's fair enough but um, yeah we're going to see what happens so yeah we've got three rods out and I'm um, just going to be seeing what happens for the next few hours and hopefully we'll have a few fish. So this is my swim, uh, number 46 on Long Lake. So you can see out there, I've got an island there and that is my water right on the corner of the island. 
So um, where you've got that overhanging tree, I've got a rod just about there, another rod sort of just about there, and then the other one comes out into open water about here, all in the same line. It's about 10 and a half to 11 wraps. And um, I've just fished all the rods in a line out there, so it's kind of a fair test with the method feeder and the solid bags. Um, all three are at the same range, and I've got the same rigs, same length of rigs as well. So I've got a lead on the solid bags, and um, obviously a method feeder on the method feeder rod. And I've all got the same hook baits, little um, SS1 wafters. And I'm just using uh, like a ground bait mix, really. Um, and that's, that's all I'm doing, really. So three rods all at the same range, out towards the island and a little bit off it. And um, yeah, I'm hoping something's gonna happen. I've had a few liners and I have lost that one fish, so it's looking good so far and I've seen a few fish in the area, so yeah, it's looking all right. We've got um, Joe just down the way there from Carpology and um, Steve is next door to me there. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel called Carp Bites, I believe. First time I met him, um, but yeah, nice bloke. So yeah, it's going to be a good social, I think. We're going to have a few beers and stuff. and. Um, plenty of fish by the looks of it because there's been a lot caught already. Right, I hope you can hear me guys, it's absolutely pouring it down. It's about an hour and a half after we started, but as you can see there, we've got one in the net. <laughs> so we're going to have to wait for this rain to stop I think. And then we'll get him out and have a look, it's a lovely scaly one. Not massive, but we're off the map. Happy days. Right, it's stopped raining now guys. And as you can see there, we've got two nets in the water with two fish. So happy days, we're off to a good start. First one I spoke about was only about six pound, but then we've got this bad boy, which might just scrape 20 pound, but we'll have to wait and see. So I'll get them out to show you. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna weigh them and see, because this match is all about the biggest fish. So yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> All right, just quickly guys, that's the first one of the session, absolutely tiny, probably about four pound, but uh, beautiful, fully scaled. It's just started raining, so I better get the camera inside and uh, I'll show you the other one when the rain stops. All right, here we go. That's fish number two and it's 18 pound, eight ounces, which is currently leading the match. Very early days, but um, yeah, it's nice to get a proper one because this lake seems to be small fish mostly. So anything over sort of mid doubles is a decent fish for here. So I'll take that all day long. So that's two fish now on the solid bags and nothing to the method feeder yet. So that's interesting. I thought the method feeder might pay off, but yeah, as I said, it's early days, so there's plenty of time and uh, be interesting to see what happens. I'll, uh, I'll get a couple of pictures of this one and get it back and I'll update you guys a little bit later on. All right, guys, here we go. That's Number three, and it's uh, 17 and a half pounds. So another nice double to add to the tally. Didn't really fight very much. It just came straight in more or less. So nice and easy, no dramas. <laughs> but yeah, another one on the solid bags. So that's three on the solid bags now and the uh, method feeder hasn't produced yet. So seems like, oh. <laughs> It's proper lively, this one. There's the other side, quickly. That's 17 and a half pound on the solid bag. So yeah, interestingly, the uh, method feeder hasn't produced yet, but we'll keep at it and see what happens for the rest of the session. <laughs> So we're coming into the evening now and um, 
I'm on three fish, so I'm really happy with that. It's a good start to the session. I think most people have caught now. There's a couple I haven't, but um, there's been a good few fish out and a good average size, you know, sort of mid doubles, mid to upper doubles have been caught and quite a few catfish as well. I think Stu down the far end down there has had at least three or four catfish. And Chris Fennell, the carp king, he's had one as well, over 30 pounds. So yeah, they've been keeping the guys busy. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with my three fish so far, all on the solid bags, believe it or not. Um, I was sort of expecting the method feeder would have, would have worked by now, but um, yeah, it might kick off in a minute, I don't know. I'm going to keep casting it out and um, getting the bait in the area. Hopefully the fish will find it and, um, and get hooked. That's the plan anyway. But yeah, we're sort of losing the light slowly. You can just see sort of um, over here behind me, a nice sunset, but it's been quite cloudy and quite rainy today. So I don't think it'll be the best sunset in the world, but it's still a nice place to be. I'm not complaining. So yeah, I'm just going to stick with it, what I'm doing. If it starts going crazy through the night, I might even wind in because I wouldn't mind getting some sleep tonight. I had an early start getting up at six to uh, leave the Isle of Wight this morning. So yeah, it'd be nice to get my head down and then maybe get the rods out first thing in the morning after a bit of a social tonight with the guys. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that as well. So that's it for now. I'm going to get some dinner on, have a beer and uh, just enjoy the evening, I think. Right, I'm really happy to say I've had my first fish on the method feeder rod. I've been out there all day and I've been recasting it to get a bit of bait out there and finally it's gone just as it was getting dark. And it's the best fish of the session. So I've made up with that, it's 22 and a half pound on the method feeder with a little SS1 trim down, pop up and just balance with a shot. And um, yeah, it's an absolute stunner as well. Really scaly, both sides. Managed to wipe out my other two rods, so I've got no rods fishing at the moment, but I'm not complaining because um, my target for the session was a 20 pounder really, and uh, managed to do it early on. So we've got plenty of time for a few more fish, hopefully. But yeah, I've got to get all three rods back out now. So yeah, I better get them back. I'll get a few pictures getting back and then uh, hopefully we'll have some more fish through the night. Get in. What a stunner. stunning today. You might see behind me there just the remains of the mist rising off the lake. It's been a really sort of um, 
damp, clear sky night last night, no wind at all, and everything's absolutely soaking. And it got quite cold. I was actually sort of in a sleeping bag, shivering, thinking, what's going on? It's July, you know. Um, I've had really hot weather lately, up to 35 degrees. And um, then last night, it must have been down to kind of the single figures almost. It was really quite cold and everything's, yeah, got a layer of sort of uh, dew on it, if you excuse the pun. Um, but actually, after that fish that you saw, that 22 pounder, I did get the rods out and then um, I had an abortive take on one of the rods. And actually, I thought, oh, it's midnight now, you know, I might as well wind in and get some sleep. So I wound the rods in and got sort of five hours sleep. And now we're up super early. I've just got the rods out again, as you might see, hopefully down there. Uh, I can't really see, but hopefully you saw them. Uh, but I've had a bit of a change of plan. I've gone with my right hand rod down to the margin, just close in. Yesterday, um, I threw a few boilies out there. I just thought, as this match is all about the biggest fish with these, these other bloggers, you know, we're all catching quite a few fish, but I want to catch the biggest fish. Um, I figured everyone's fishing out to the island um, and the, the margins are fairly neglected. And quite often on commercials, the bigger fish tend to hug around the margins, picking up any bait that's been sort of chucked in by anglers when they leave and that sort of thing. So I've gone with um, a boilie rig down the right hand margin there, just a snowman fished over a couple of handfuls of boilies. Uh, you know, I put some out yesterday and then I've just put a few more out with the rod. So I've got that one out there. I've still got my uh, solid bag to the island and my method feeder sort of next to it in the same area. So um, we're still doing the test of the solid bags and the method feeder, but the other rod's kind of out of the equation, just fishing down the margin, hoping for a bigger fish. So. Yeah, that's where we're up to at the moment. Um, I'm going to show you my sort of um, rigs and tactics a little bit more detail today, so you get a few tips out of the video as well. So stay tuned for that. I'm just going to have some breakfast, and uh, once it warms up and everything dries out, I'll, uh, I'll show you a bit more on what we're doing. Right, happy days. I only had the rods out for half an hour, and I said I was going to put one in the margin, hoping for a bigger fish. Oh, middle rod. Little rod is doing things. Yeah, I said I'd put one in the margin hoping for a bigger fish, and um, we've got the second smallest fish of the session on the margin rod, so it hasn't played out like I thought it would, but at least it's another fish, so yeah, it's about a uh, 12 pound mirror, I think. So I'll get this one out in a second and show you, and stay tuned because, as I said, we'll be talking through the tactics a little bit later on. Right, I was just about to get that fish out to show you guys. And then the middle rod's just gone as well. That's the one on the method feeder. So I've had one on boilies down the margins and one on the method feeder within five minutes of each other. And actually the left hand rod pulled up tight as well. So I feel like there's fish out there feeding. So I better get these fish sorted and get the rods sorted. So we might be able to capitalize on this little feeding spell. All right. Here we go, that's the first fish taken down the margins, just over boilies. 13 and a half pounds at about the average size for an ear. But yeah, it's nice to get a new spot working. So I've had actually four different spots work on this session. And uh, yeah, it doesn't seem to matter where you put it really, as long as you've got a bit of bait there and a good presentation, you've got a good chance of a fish. And so I'll get the other one out in a second and show you that one and then we'll be talking tactics. Right, and here's the other one, guys. Lovely scaly, but not very big at all. Probably only maybe six pounds or something, if I'm lucky. But that's another one on the method feeder. So two to the method feeder so far. And a beautiful scaly one, I think you'll agree. It doesn't matter about the size, really, when they look like that. Imagine that when it's sort of 30 pounds in a few years' time. Absolute stunner, perfect mouth on it. I'm happy with that. So yeah, nice to get two in quick succession. Let's get him back. Right, so I've just wound in my margin rod uh, to rechuck it because I had a savage line on there and I was just a bit worried that the lead might have got moved and the hook sort of um, pulled into something on the bottom. And actually when I wound in, there was a bit of rubbish on the hook. So I'm glad that I've done that. 
But whilst it's in, I just thought I'd quickly show you what I'm using on the margin rod, and then I'll show you my other two rods, which are this sort of solid bag and the method rods, which are kind of fishing against each other on this session, just to see which one wins really. Um, but this is my margin rod that I've been using. It's my um, Amnesia D-Rig that I've been using a lot lately. I've done a few videos on this now, if you look back on my channel, and it's been doing really well for me. And that was the rig that I caught that fish on this morning, just down the margins over a few boilies. So I've got an amino ester 15 mil boily on there with half an SS1 white pop-up on there just to sort of pop it up a bit like a snowman and it sits on the bottom like that with the hook flat on the bottom and the bait just sitting above it. So when the carp picks it up the hook drops down and then you've got putty in the middle there which just sinks it down into the fish's mouth um, and inline lead because it's a hard bottom on this lake and it's not a long distance anywhere. It's only 40 yards to the island, so inline lead gives you the best hooking properties. Um, and that's about probably nine or 10 inches long because I'm fishing over a scatter of boilies, so I'm thinking the fish are going to be moving along, picking up individual baits rather than sort of hoovering on the spot, if you like. So I've got, you know, nine, 10 inches to give them plenty of movement um, to get that in their mouth. And yeah, it's just a simple D-rig, so you just do a knotless knot, put the tag end back through with a hook ring swivel on a D there, just blob it, and then you can floss your bait on any bait you want, really. Um, and that's it, it's just fished um, naked on the line there. This was actually one of the rods that I was using as a solid bag, and I've just used the lead setup from that to put on the margin rod and put that out, you know, and within half an hour, 45 minutes, I'd already had a carp on it, so that obviously works. Um, so onto the other rods. So that is obviously a solid bag, but the beauty of this is I've got um, one of the catch more stems there, hopefully you can see that, which allows you to quick change these bags with a loop to loop method. It's got a little metal loop at the end there. So you can loop that on, so you can have loads of these tied up in a, in a bucket of pellets or whatever you're using and just change them when you need to so I've got got that and I'll show you the rig that's inside there at the moment I've just got pellets in there I've been chopping and changing between pellets and a sort of a ground bait mix that I've got on both the method and the solid bag rods really just to see what's working um, I've got on both so it doesn't seem to matter at the moment but that's got pellet in it um, and the rig in that bag is so this is the inline lead a three ounce one that's the stem there, and the lead just sits on the stem. You've probably seen these before. These are the ones from Catchmore Carp, um, PVA company, but they also make a few other bits. And actually, if you look down below the video in the description, um, I've actually got a link where you can go and buy these and get yourself a discount um, using my special code. So if you have a look on, there's a website link down there and use the code, get yourself a discount on PVA and um, other sort of end tackle items such as that um, stem there. So the rig that I'm using is just um, a bog standard blowback rig really with a little white wafter on there, a little SS1 wafter that just sits above the hook like that in amongst the bait that's in your bag. And then I've just got a knotless knot, a bit of silicone on the shank just to make the hair come off the bend where you want it. A little kicker there just to help it turn blob of putty in the middle which sinks it down and then a loop at the end which I just looped a loop onto the swivel of the lead there um, and that is all going into a bag with either pellets or a ground bait mix as I was saying earlier on and that has done me I think it's four fish now and the other two fish have been on the method feeder so I'll show you that next and then <laughs> it doesn't get much more simple than that that is my method feeder so basically I've got some dampen down pellets which form a bit of a paste I'm just squashing onto there so it matches the solid bags you know I'm using pellets in them as well but also I've got a ground bait mix which is um, like a really sort of uh, thick pasty sort of mix with some pellets in that as well so I'm sort of mixing it up chopping and changing just to see what works so I'm just molding that onto there making like a, a nice sort of rounded uh, half circle if you like on top and then the rig is the same that I showed you for the solid bag, so I won't bother showing you that again, but it hooks onto this quick change swivel there. And then the bait goes 
on top of the feeder once you've got the first layer of bait on and then another layer of bait on top just to sort of compact it down and it leaves the bait in amongst that uh, so when it's sat on the bottom and that's all breaking down you know your hook bait is just sort of kind of sitting on top or it rolls off to the side and the fish can come in and, and suck that in quite easily with a short hook length you know about sort of four or five inches and uh, again it's barbless rules on here so I'm using a size five chod style hook with a little kicker on there just to hopefully um, nail them and I've not got any tubing on there I don't think I need it really it's not going to tangle you know so I don't need any anti-tangle tubing but the, the swivel just pulls into the lead and this can free run up the line so when a carp takes it 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 can sort of turn into a running rig so it can't use the weight of that to shed the hook and that's that's got me my biggest fish last night 22 and a half pounder and another fish this morning as well so that's working as well but it doesn't seem to be catching as many fish as I thought it might do. Sometimes on method feeder you can have a crazy session and you know it can outfish any other methods but on here it doesn't really seem to be making much difference so I'm going to stick with it anyway because it might kick off at any minute but yeah I'll get this one back out now and I think it's about time I had some lunch. Finally had another fish after a slow day so far, apart from those two first thing. And it's another one on the method feeder. Uh, so that's seven fish now. I've had four on the solid bags and three on the method feeder. So the method feeder's catching up. And this one is 1912, was it we said? 1912, yeah. So almost a 20 pounder. And it's another beautiful scaly one. So I'm really happy with that. I left the rods wound in for a bit while I went to the loo and had a walk around the lake and stuff and it seems like um, resting the swim has paid off. So yeah, I'm really happy with that one. Beautiful fish. I'll get a, get a couple of pictures of it and, uh, and get it back. Happy days. Right guys, so I'm well pleased to be catching like I am on this session. I've had seven fish in a little over 24 hours and we've still got another 24 hours to go. So if we carry on like this, it could be a real session to remember. I just thought I'd quickly run you through the spots that I'm fishing. If you ever come to Coking Farm, I'm on swim 46 and um, I've got an island out in front, as you can see here and then this open water area. And all I've really been doing is clipping all the rods up to the same range, which is about 10 and a half wraps. And I've had two rods on the islands there and there. That's my solid bags. And then my method feed is literally just there. So three in a row, all at the same range. And um, I've had bites on all of them now. And I've actually had one in the margin this morning down to the right here as well. So I've had four different spots produced for me walking around the lake and chatting to all the other guys it seems like everything's working you know it doesn't really matter what sort of spot you choose whether it's the margin whether it's open water or the islands the fish are just um, everywhere and seems to be moving around in shoals so it can be quiet for a few hours and then you might get a couple of runs and then it'll go quiet again so just you know if you ever come here just pick a swim you know it doesn't really matter which one i think and um just stick to your spots and be patient because the fish will turn up eventually. Maybe get a little bit of bait out. Some of the guys have been baiting up with spoms and stuff and um, catching over bait. I've mostly just been using the solid bags and the method feeder. Obviously the method feeder introduces a bit of bait as you keep casting, um, but I'm not using loads of bait at all really. I'm just recasting it every hour or so just to keep fresh bait in the area and um, make sure the presentation is good and everything like that and it seems to be working so far so yeah i'm really happy quite a lot of people have caught catfish today it was quite hot earlier on 
with the sun out and everything. I think the catfish have kind of woken up after the rain we had yesterday. The cats have kind of woken up on that warmer weather. And I think there's been at least kind of seven or eight cats caught today up to about 28 pound. I think Chris Fennell actually had a 33 pounder either yesterday or today. Um, I'm not keen on catfish to be honest with you, so I'm quite glad I've not had one yet. Um, but there's always a chance, I think, everyone's sort of fishing similar tactics and yeah, it's just the luck of the draw what you catch really. Um, but my average size of fish has been really good, you know, I've had a 20, a 19, an 18 and a 17 and then sort of three smaller ones. But yeah, I'm really happy with that sort of average size. So it's been a really fun session so far. Um, just going to have some lunch, I think. Um, and then later on, we've got the social. So all the guys are going to go around and we're all having a pizza together and a bit of fun and games and a few drinks and stuff. So that should be good as well. So stay tuned, guys. I'll keep you updated if anything else happens. Right, well, we've had a little bit of carnage again, guys. I was just sitting there thinking, why am I not getting any takes? I think Joe, to my right, has had three on the bounce and he had to borrow my net, my spare net. And then I've just had a take and then as I was playing that, the other rod's gone. So one on the solid bag and one on the method feeder. And I've had to borrow a net from Steve next door. So yeah, and they both look like nice fish. One's certainly a mid-double and the other one might be pushing 20 pounds, so... Yeah, it's insane, isn't it? You can be sat there, not catching, and suddenly have two at once. So yeah, I'll get these out and show you. Hopefully, there'll be time for more. Right, guys, as I've, as I've just said, I had two fish at the same time there. My left hand rod on the solid bag went, and it felt like a really good fish. And as I was playing that, the middle rod started going. And I'd already lent my net out to Joe next door, who's got three fish in nets. And uh, so I had to borrow a net from Steve, the other side of me. And I've had two absolute stunners and they're good sizes as well. So this one is 19 pound. Absolutely lovely, scaly one. Well happy with that. That's on the solid bag. Beautiful fish. They all seem to be quite nice in here really. Lovely stock. So yeah, 19 pound and the other one definitely bigger so we'll get that one out next well I'd said this fish was bigger I was convinced it was bigger actually it's exactly the same size 19 pound so they must have come through in a shoal and fed on the spot and got hooked within within 30 seconds of each other so it's a bit lively <laughs> but I'll try and get it up to show you there we go so that was a 19 pounder caught on the solid bag. The other one was on the method feeder. Lovely scaly linear. Yeah, and it's been a great session. I've had, I think it's nine fish now. And uh, a really good average size as well for, for a lake like this. So happy days. Let's get it back and I've got two rods to sort out now. <laughs> right, just a little common this time, guys. Probably just a scraper double, that one, and that's on the method feeder, so we've had five on the bags and four on the method feeder, so nine in total now. It's uh, been quite hectic this afternoon. So uh, we're going to have our social in a minute, so I'd better get this fish back and get the rod back out. And then hopefully um, I can have a couple more this evening. And I might even wind in tonight because I wouldn't mind getting some sleep. I don't think I could handle catching these all night. <laughs> Oh, right, there we go. The last fish before the social. Everyone's already gone up there now, but I just had this fish as I was about to wind in. A 16 pound common on the solid bag. So that's six on the bag and four on the method feeder now. So solid bags are still winning at the moment, but it could just be that that side of the spot is producing more fish. I don't know. It doesn't seem to be a lot in it at the moment. So yeah. It's nice to be catching anyway, whatever method I'm using. So yeah, I'll have to get this fish back now because uh, I think our pizzas are arriving in a minute. And we've got a few games apparently involving ping pong balls and stuff. So <laughs> that should be quite amusing as well. 
So yeah, I'll get this one back. Yeah, and go and have some food and a couple of beers. I did manage one more fish just before the social, but unfortunately my microphone ran out of batteries at this point and I hadn't noticed. Well, good morning, guys. I have to admit, it's a feeling a little bit shabby this morning. After that social last night, we had a real fun time. Uh, everyone had pizzas and burgers and stuff and a few beers, and then they had some games. One was just uh, getting ping pong balls in a cup, but the other one was um, one that I've seen on the internet recently where you have to play rock, paper, scissors with a mouthful of water, and the loser has to uh, uh, get slapped in the face with, with a wrap. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, Hugh and Joe played that and all of us were in hysterics. And then we had to um, underarm a lead into a landing net from about, uh, sorry, into an unhooking mat from about sort of 20, 30 yards away. That was quite amusing as well. Um, but yeah, got back to my swim about probably half nine, ten. It wasn't too late, just, just before it got dark. And I got my method rod out. I was just about to sort the other rods and the method rod went. So I caught, um, I think it was a seven or eight pound sort of little leathery one. I uh, didn't bother getting it out properly because um, it was only a small one and I wanted to get the rods out. Um, and you know, it was getting dark. So I just filmed it in the net for you um, and let it go. But that is 12 fish now we're on. Um, six on the method and six on the solid bag so there's not a lot between it um i didn't actually fish the rest of the night because i just wanted to get some sleep really i was pretty tired but then i've just got the rods out this morning so i had a solid bag already tied up in my bait bucket so that got the loops on once i'd clipped the rod up looped that on cast it out the method rod went straight back out and i've got the margin rod back down the margins and i've tried a, a double bottom bait on that rod, just hoping for a bigger fish down the margins. I've been putting boilies in there the whole session really and hoping that a bigger fish has sort of found them and he's going to come and visit. And that double bottom bait is really subtle, you know, there's nothing bright on there, it's just matching the hatch but it's a bit bigger so hopefully deter the smaller fish. So yeah, that's where we're up to at the moment, it's about half eight in the morning so we've only got probably three hours left before we have to go. Uh, so I'm going to get a coffee on and some breakfast and see what the rest of the day brings. But yeah, happy to be on 12 fish. It's sort of in the middle of everyone. Some people have had less than that, some people have had more. But it is all about the biggest fish on this session, so it doesn't matter how many we've caught. But yeah, it's been a good session. I've had a 20 pounder and loads of upper doubles as well. So it's been, been fun and uh, yeah, one to remember. Right guys, I just wanted to quickly take a, a minute to talk about the bivvy that I'm using on this session. You may have noticed from some of the shots, it's absolutely massive. Um, I don't normally use a two-man bivvy, but uh, ProLogic sent this one for me to try out, so I thought I'd use it on this session and see how I get on with it. Um, it's the ProLogic C-Series two-man bivvy. It's not a review because I haven't used it long enough really, but just a quick look really at what you can get for under £300. That's unbelievable value, I think, for a two-man bivvy. I uh, don't think there's many bivvies on the market for under £300, let alone a two-man bivvy. 
and it comes with a ground sheet as well, which is a bonus. And you can get it with an overwrap, which is slightly more expensive, but I, I believe it's still under 300 pounds. So really good bivvy for the money, guys. It comes with a peak to keep the weather out, but you can also roll that back if you want to, get it out of the way. And you can open the front and roll the sides back completely. So you can have it as just a shelter or just roll the door up as I've done there. You also get a window in the back, which is quite rare for a bivvy of this budget. The material is really good as well. It's 8,000 hydrostatic head, which is, is more than enough really for most situations. Um, it's rained heavily on this session and it hasn't let me down. So yeah, really good bivy for the money, I think. It comes with good quality ground pegs as well. Um, they haven't sort of spared any expense on, uh, on the ground pegs. So you've got really good quality ones that are not going to bend on you. And um, it's fairly lightweight as well, which is also quite rare for a two-man bivy. So, yeah, if you're looking for a bivy that's fairly budget friendly, just for occasional use maybe, just if you go to France a couple of times a year, you want a bit more space, or if you occasionally take your kids with you or something like that, and uh, you want a bit more space for them, it's an ideal choice. But also for the angler that's uh, on more of a budget, you know, it's uh, not always the case that you want to spend a thousand pounds on a two man bivy. You can actually get this for under 300 pounds. So I think that's absolutely fantastic value. As I said, not a full review because I haven't used it for long enough, but just a quick look at it. Uh, nice looking bivy, good colour and everything. The material's really nice. And um, it goes up quick and easy. It's fairly lightweight and it's stood up to strong winds on this session. We had sort of 40 mile an hour last night and it didn't, didn't move, didn't blow away. And I got a good night's sleep, so that's all good. Um, yeah, so if you're in the market for a budget friendly two man bivy, Go check out the C series Two Man Bivy from ProLogic. Right, guys, we have come to the end of the session now. I've still got my rods in the water, but um, more or less packed up in the way now. Just got a few bits to sort out, but I'm going to get the rods in now because we've got to go do the prize draw for the match. I think Dan has won it with a 27 pounder, so that's a good fish for here. Uh, I think Ben's had a couple of mid-20s as well, so they've done well. But I was happy to have 120, £22.8. So yeah, it's been a good session, 12 fish. Only lost one, I think, so pretty pleased with that, really, for a 48-hour session. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed the video, and uh, it's interesting to put the method feeder against the solid bags and see which one won, and actually it was six all. Um, you know, six on, six on one, six on the other, so it hasn't made that much difference, really. Um, but it just shows that uh, both tactics will work, especially on this lake where there's lots of fish. I think the method feeder is one for heavily stocked waters, really, where you can get the fish competing and coming in in shoals. So yeah, if you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, guys. Leave a comment if you've got any questions or you want to give it some love. And uh, yeah, make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. Got lots more coming up. We've got a French trip coming up in a couple of weeks' time. And then uh, plenty more sessions planned after that as well. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.